What up? <clears throat> I'm uh, gonna do some extra work on this. So there's a bunch of stuff I need to do, but there's something we're gonna do first, which I should have done <clears throat> in the first episode, but I didn't. We're gonna set up the source control for the project so that we can make check-ins and we can track what work we're doing and we can you know it'll just be more organized it'll it'll help us out in the long run um so i'm going to use microsoft source control just because it's really easy to set up so i have a i have a Mi microsoft account which is <coughs> my maximum scarf account and if i go to if i go online I can go to, what did they call it, Visual Studio Online, they renamed it but I can't remember the name, Visual Studio Team Services, okay, that's what they called it. So you can set up an account here, <coughs> so if I sign in, da 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 da, keyboard switched to an American keyboard. That's annoying. I have to switch that back. I set up a new account for doing all this development stuff on, just to keep everything clean. Um, but it didn't really work because it's, it's obviously made by keyboard American, which is massively annoying. However, I'll fix that later. Uh, so you see, when you log in here, you have these team projects, and these are TFS projects. So it's like TFS is Team Foundation Server. You're supposed to use it for managing your code and stuff. Uh, most of you guys won't care about that uh, for doing your own projects at home, which is fair enough. You know, I'm pretty hardcore when it comes to that stuff, but I don't think it's necessary, not if you're just making your own projects. But it brings you into here, right? This is like your, your overview, which looks really daunting. There's a lot of stuff here. However, we don't really need to worry about most of it just now because we're just going to deal with setting up our code base, right? So if I click on code, you can see here, this is my, this is my code repository, right? It's not got much in it. It's got a few build process templates, which I'm probably going to delete just because... I don't care about their build process templates. So that's them gone, right? That's my first change set. So if I go to change sets, you can see that I have submitted one deleting that stuff. Fair enough. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this project that we've made here and save it in this folder here on the website, right? So that Basically, from any computer, we could sign in, we could start making changes, all that kind of stuff. Um, most importantly, it's for keeping track of your changes so that you can roll one out when it breaks. That's the most useful part of it. However, in order to do that, we need to go into Visual Studio. And if we go to Team, I think it is, Team, you can do Connect to Team Foundation Server, which is what that is. So I have already connected to mine. Um, it would normally bring up this page, right? Because I've logged in to my Visual Studio account, it can go off to this website, find me, and get my projects. So then I go, OK, and you can see parallel stories. Here it is. So I'm connected to that, and then here, I'm going to get rid of this, and I'll so you see here, we can do, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Pending changes is any changes that we've made recently, we can send them up to the server. Source Control Explorer, this is literally what we saw over there. So if I do get latest, that will download the change from there and it should delete that folder. So you have to do get latest to sync with whatever is the version up here, but you can also push stuff to it. 
I'm not going to go into too much detail about source control just because it's really not that interesting to people who don't care about it. However, it's super useful. Um, I think most people have come around to that way of thinking these days. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to find where our workspace is. It's here. C users, max scarf, source, workspaces, parallel stories. All right. Now that's fine. What we can do here is we might want to create a new branch or a new folder. A new folder, I think, is what we want. We want a folder for membership, maybe. Membership. What did I call that project? Did I just call it Parallel Stories? I did. Yeah, okay. Let's delete that for now. What we'll do is we'll go and find where this is, right? So this is in what? Um, where's my um, documents? 2013, is it projects? Where did it say it had mapped to? C uses Max Scarf source workspaces parallel stories. Okay. C uses Max Scarf source. Shit, I've totally forgotten already. Workspaces parallel stories. So this membership folder is one that I just created and deleted. So I'll just delete that again. Now. If we go to, if we open another one of these, and we go to this PC, local <coughs> parallel stories, and we go in here, you can see that here we have all this. So if we take this, and we move it to here, then that's fine, and we should be able to hear. No, we don't have the shell. <clears throat> we don't have the TFS shell. But that's fine. We can go. How are we going to add this? We can go uh, show files that aren't added, maybe? Add items. There we go. <coughs> So we want to add this. So that's added the solution and then we want to add this, which is the entire thing. So now we can expand this and see We've got membership DB and we've got all this stuff that comes with it. So that's all the files that we've previously had. Now if I go into pending changes, you'll see here it is. So we're adding parallel stories dot solution and we're adding membership dot DB. Right. Brilliant. I have done a little bit since last time. I created this membership dot SQL schema, which basically means instead of doing DBO dot user, I can do like um, membership.user. Now, interestingly, I think this is actually the wrong version of my project. Because this is dot .user. Oh, I've got a count as well. That's right, I deleted that. So I need to exclude that. We don't need that. What we need is account.sql so that we've got membership account and membership. So you see here it's membership.account instead of dbo.account. It's not a massive change, but it's uh, it's definitely definitely something. So we can actually undo this. We don't need it. We can just get rid of it. 
and then here we're gonna check this stuff in right so the first thing we want to do is I'm just gonna keep this super basic for now there's a lot more stuff I would usually do we're gonna create a check-in comment which is gonna be like um, adding solution and membership.db right pretty basic so then what we can do is we can check that in continue to check in yes uh, yes. So that's been checked in. So now if we go back to here, you can see this stuff is all checked in. And if I go to parallel stories and I do view history, you can see here it is our change set, adding solution and membership. Brilliant. And if I go back to the website and I refresh this, see here it is we have all our stuff you can do a lot of really nice stuff in here you can actually edit or you can I think you can even add like comments and stuff to the code and you can see all the change sets here as well I'm thinking about opening this up to the public but uh, not for a while that's for sure <clears throat> so the other tab you have here as well as code you also have work and what work does is you have you can create like a like a backlog of tasks stuff you want to do so I've created one called user story uh, called user login even <laughs> user login right I'm gonna rename it to like account login just because I want to right I can assign that to myself as a user, I want to log into the website so that I can interact with it. That's fair enough, right? So I can save that. And that is that. Now within this, I can actually, I'm going to move this to, iteration one, which is our current iteration, which I think lasts forever no set dates so this is just gonna last forever this is basically the work we're doing it's supposed to be a timed thing it's like a business it's called the agile development but for now I'm not gonna do that shit because I'm just coding at home so we're just gonna use this for tracking the work we want to do so within the, within this user story we can, we can do all sorts of stuff but I just want to I want to start adding tasks to it why won't it let me add tasks what am I missing is it here ah yes new linked work item so we can add a task which is like a uh, What do we want to do? We've got our database now, which I should probably cover in a task. Create membership.db and account table, right? So that becomes a task. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. You can estimate how long it's gonna take, all that kind of stuff. But we're just going to save it because we've already done the work, so what's the point? And we want to link it to a change set, right? And our change set is going to be, let's find them all, this one. So if I hit OK, OK, save then we can see that as part of account login we created the membership DB and the account table 
And this is how we did it. This is all the code that we did. And you can add comments, so someone could come back to this change set and say like, uh, boo, this sucks. Membership dot account. What kind of a name is that? You see? And then anyone can come in and see it. And you can see all these comments. Now I'm just going to delete that just because I like membership.account. I'm not going to hate on myself. But it's really useful. Um, it's really interesting as well. It really helps you uh, analyze your code on a more more detailed level. You can also do a bunch of build stuff. You can do tests if you want a tester. I'm not going to have a tester, obviously. Um, I'll just be doing manual testing myself. However, if we go back to account login, we've got create membership DB and account table. So what else do we want to do? We'll put a few stuff in here. Um, and then maybe do some actual coding. Um, in this episode, maybe not. Maybe I'll leave that till next episode. But we can at least figure out what we're going to do next. That's the whole point of this, is that you can figure out what you need to do next. So, <clears throat> we need... What do we need? We need to... Create membership. Well, actually, we need, what I wanted to do was, this is what I wanted to do, and this is what we're going to do. We're not going to create membership yet. We're going to create, so the question is, how do I want to do this? We can split it out at a later date. For now, we'll just create parallel stories dot web, right? which is going to be our ASP.NET project, which we'll actually run and we'll see the website. So it's going to have a back end and our front end. So that's what we're going to do next time, right? So I'll assign that to myself just because why not, right? It's a good habit. And then <clears throat> you can see here, well, I can't see anything here. That now in here, when I'm making a change, here's something cool. I can actually add my work items. What I want is a query. I want a query that's like assigned to me. Assigned to me is my favorite. My queries, shared queries, my tasks. I want my tasks to be in my favorites, right? So now, if I come in here, maybe no personal favorite queries found. Might need to refresh. Let's see. Do, do, do. There we go, my tasks. So now I know what I'm working on next time, I can do this. I can literally drag that here. I can literally drag that here. There we go. And that's my task, which means that next time I come in here and I'm like, oh, what am I going to work on? Oh look, I was going to create parallel stories dot web project. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's what we'll do next time. For now, I mean, I guess I've shown source control. We have it set up. We hasn't given us any strict benefit in terms of functionality, but it has set up a little bit of our infrastructure that we need to actually be able to do some work, you know. <clears throat>
and actually get this get this show on the road. However, for now, I will leave it at that. Source control and a little bit of TFS. And uh, catch you guys on the flip side, yo.